Freedom at Fort Mose. By September of 1754, 12-year-old Lucius Jackson and his family had been living at Fort Mose in St. Augustine, Florida for a year. They were part of a group who had escaped from a plantation in South Carolina. They had heard that Fort Mose was a place of refuge for runaways. Over the years, many people were willing to endure the treacherous journey there in return for the promise of freedom. During his time at Fort Mose, Lucius kept a diary to record what happened there. 17th September, 1754. It has been raining for more than a week now. This weather reminds me of my days learning to read and write back in Charleston. When the rains came, we couldn't work in the fields and we were forced to stay in the cabins. We knew that Mr. Slocum, the landowner, detested getting his boots wet, so he rarely came to check on us. He thought that all we knew were work and obedience. Miss Cecilia took a great risk writing letters and words on the dirt floor of the cabin for us children to learn. She said that as the eldest member in our cabin, it was a risk she was willing to take. Learning to read was easy for me because I was so happy to learn how to turn letters into words and words into ideas. I believe that reading is a gift that cannot be measured. Mr. Samuel Cantor believes this too. He is a farmer who lives near us and who gave me this fine diary. He said, you are doing a good thing, Lucius. In years to come, people can read about this place and understand what we have risked to gain our freedom. 8th October 1754. Last night, I got to go on patrol with my father. My duty involved walking along the wall of the fort with him, looking and listening for anything unusual. It has been a while since we came under attack but we cannot let our let down our guard. We also listen for any people who may be coming here to seek freedom, as we did about one year ago. While on patrol, I thought about the night my family came to Fort Mose and how scared but hopeful all of us felt as we entered through the big heavy gates. I must stop writing now, as it is my turn today to help gather palm fronds which we lay out in the sun to dry. Once they are dried, they can be used to repair older huts and to build new ones. Each week, more people come to the fort. Our priest, Father de las Casas, keeps the records, and he tells us that there are almost a hundred people now. Last week, a new family arrived. Oh, I'm sorry the 26th October, 1754. Last week, a new family arrived all the way from Virginia, and like everyone else, they arrived almost starved and weak beyond belief. My mother helped the family by giving them clean clothes to replace the ones that they had been wearing, and their old ones were quickly discarded. The day after they arrived, I tried to talk to the boy who was about my age, but he ignored me. The next day, I tried again to speak to the boy whose name is Will. I showed him this diary and explained that it depicts as accurately as possible our life at Fort Mose and the people who come here. He seemed surprised and asked, you know how to read and write? Yes, I told him. He looked at me without speaking, but I could see a question in his eyes. Do you want to learn? I asked him. Is it not dangerous? He asked quietly, looking around to see if anyone could hear us. I smiled, remembering how long it took me to understand freedom and what it meant. Will, I said to my new friend, here at Fort Mose, you are free to learn and I am free to teach you. We began our lessons right away. <laughs>